Hello, good afternoon, and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our series talking about assignment. And we're going to be discussing assignment skills. Now, most of us are familiar with assignment skills. For example, uh, if we take a look at a list of assignment criteria in Siebel Tools, and we query for, let's query for a well-known assignment criteria, a well-known assignment criteria, language code which has a display name of language if we look along the right hand side we'll see that it is defined as a skill and it says to use expertise what exactly does that mean from a Siebel perspective well first of all let's look at the idea of skills if we make a query and we find for example the service request assignment object we'll see that the assignment object has been defined as having a skill table and a skill item table. The skill table and the skill item table have a parent and child relationship. If I insert a skill, for example language, then there may be multiple skill items Chinese, English, Arabic, French, and so have you. What is interesting is that uh, a number of assignment objects have been uh, pre-configured to use skill tables um, but there are others, let's take for example from public sector, the case object, where the skill table has been configured but there is no skill item table. Um, we'll come back to that as a concept or as a, as a subject for discussion later on. Going back to skill tables and skill items, if we return to our application and go to service requests, we can choose the assignment skills detail view and the assignment skills detail view is available to us to add a skill. Let's choose the skill of language. And when we scroll down, we have a dynamically uh, adjustable applet here for the skill items. So based on the skill, the skill item displays, I will choose a language code. There we go, Chinese. Now these two applets are based on the service request skill and service request skill item business components respectively and if we go and look at these business components we'll actually find that there are three there's a skill a skill item uh, notice the classes by the way and a skill name sequence uh, let's take a look at the applets We'll also see that for skill items, the dynamically modifying uh, applet, there is a specialized class. And this is the class that handles displaying the correct column here uh, based on the choice of skill here. If you use a default class or if you switch it just for test purposes, you will find that the skill item business component has a few surprises. The skill item business component actually contains a list of fields, some of which are straight obvious, like the expertise code, but you'll notice that there are four characters and four numbers, as well as the foreign key to the parent skill. Now, those of you with good memories will remember uh, that there was a property in the assignment criteria that we discussed last week that involved choosing a number between one and four. Uh, if you want to learn more about it, the bookshelf is wide open for you. In any case, uh, we've now discovered that there are custom business components for skill and skill item. And uh, we're going to turn our attention to the concept of expertise. Expertise is something that we've always probably all come across. And it is important to know how expertise works in Siebel assignment. Let's go back to our assignment criteria and let's take a let's take a look at the language code again as we saw before it is listed as an employee skill so it uses a skill table and a skill item table and is listed as having using expertise what does this actually mean well if we query for expertise underscore cd we will discover the three default values for expertise codes used in Siebel assignment rules what is probably not best known is the weighting factor Suppose that the uh, weighting factor for export is a, expert is 100, for intermediate is 50, and for novice is 25. What this means is that if I um, 
making an assignment rule, a candidate who has expert level in a particular skill will win 100% of any score that I give to them, and the intermediate will win 50% of any score, and the novice will win only 25% of any score. That in itself is extremely useful. Incidentally, if the weighting factor is not visible to you in the list of values, uh, you can always choose it from columns displayed. And of course, if you need to, you could create your own levels. And let's say that a guru has 90%. Uh, I am now able to choose from my four different values. The final part of our investigation of assignment objects returns to PUB case, the assignment object where a skill table was present, but a skill item table was not present. Uh, as an investigation, um, it is, for example, interesting to create a customer extension table using the Siebel Tools database extensibility the table can be built with the same structure as any other skill item table because they have all the same structure with uh, the same columns and uh, it's quite straightforward to create. Therefore, uh, without going into discussions of whether it is supported or not, from a concept uh, level it should be possible to use skills for objects that were not defined as having skill item tables to begin with provided the uh, relative rel provided the relevant uh, table metadata and other uh, business components have been compiled and the user interface has been created in this case purely for demonstration purposes and not suggesting in any way shape or form that this would represent uh, a viable supported solution i have created the table and I have created the business components. So case skill, case skill item, case skill item name sequence using the relative the using the relevant classes. I have created the uh, business components for case skill and uh, created the relevant applets as well. Um, so that uh, when I return to my cases view and I decide to look for example at a case which is a visa request in the Arabic language then the new case skills view allows me to select the language and the language code in much the same way as you would do and you would expect to do for a service request um, and we'll see how assignment manager is able to cope with that when we run a batch assignment job